Cool. Welcome everyone to the JSIPFS Core Web Dev Weekly of March 19. Um, today we have some new faces on the call. And so instead of like jumping right into the typical stand-up, um, I just want to make sure that like we, well, we get just like a round of introductions, um, quick, like just name, location, uh, and just then touch in some points in some direction for the new for the new people that join, so that they they understand how the call works and how we structure our work, etc. Um, and so, yeah, like I'll, I'll start uh, on the beat, like kind of like with the, the JSIP first project, um, and and the one. Is forcing everyone to have calls every Monday to like talk about what they've done. Um, do you go on, do you want to go next? Like, I, I'm going to go through the list as I see in Zoom. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so uh, I'm Gil. I'm from Portugal, and I'm new to the team. Basically, this is my first day, and I'm about to start to contribute. To the Sweet, welcome, Vasco. Uh, Hello guys, uh, I'm Vasco and I'm also a Diogo from Porto and Portugal too, obviously. Uh, this is also my first day here with you and uh, well, I want to be part of the team, so let's go. Sweet, welcome, welcome. Uh, Victor? Uh, hello, I am not new, I think. Yes. Um, I'm Victor, I do not work mainly on JavaScript directly but I am the lead of the testing and dev team enablement working group. So I'm here to help you with testing and everything related to that and to make your developer life more easy. Cool, thank you. Uh, John? Hey guys, um, yeah, my name is Jonathan. Uh, I've been working on some uh, like mostly medium and lower priority issues on the JavaScript. Uh, on all the IPFS libraries, and not really touching the P2P, but most of the like JSIPFS and IPFS API and the daemon work with Dimitri. Um, yep, I live in Virginia in the US. Sweet, thank you. Dimitri? Hey, um, my name is Dimitri. I'm in uh, Costa Rica. Um, I work mainly on JSIPFS, pretty much, Caitlin uh, and everything that comes up over there. Um, yeah, that's it. Cool, thank you. Uh, Rob? Howdy, I'm Rob. Um, I'm, I'm not really new, but I'm not here very often. I've only been on the call intermittently a couple of times. So uh, I am working sort of for a few months uh, with Protocol Labs on trying to sort of condense a better strategy and approach around documentation for all the different parts of IPFS. Um, so that's kind of uh, what I'm doing right now. There's some ongoing work in the IPFS docs repo, but it's sort of cross-cutting across everything. So I'm trying to make sure I'm around in different places. Um, and for those of you who are new, uh, if you run into to issues and things that are confusing or complicated, uh, I would love to hear your story about those or what's the problems so that they're better addressed in the documentation and so that they're not confusing. Uh, awesome, thank you. I think you have three new people to give you some feedback on that. <laughs> um, so, cool. Zane? Cool. Uh, I'm just sort of new to the project and like exploring and uh, just jumping on any sort of like issues that are sort of popping up in JS and IPFS that are um, low hanging fruit. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Alex? Hi, um, I'm Alex. I'm based in London in the UK. Uh, and we're working on the JavaScript repos and my first day actually tomorrow. So <laughs> thank you for joining today, Alex, and taking some time from your holidays to be part of the call. Uh, Machi, are you there? Um, so I'm just a random contributor. I'm developing some lib P2P things like lib P2P node trust and lib P2P web socket star, which has been annoying people lately. And uh, yeah, that's all I do. Just joining here and there from time to time. 
Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so I hope, especially for the newcomers, that like this quick round of introductions, although not very complete, but gave you an idea like who is working on what, and so you know who to ask questions about specific things. Um, I like so I sent you all like I've published um, to the JSIPFS repo a document MGMT that basically describes how we track work on JSIPFS land. Um, we track work in a waffle board and then every week we have this call where we share what we have done what we are blocked and uh, what is next you know in our our plates like our focus um, the way that we pick things to work it is pretty much by using the filtering function uh, on the waffle and isolating something that's called high priority um to the project and typically you can see that by p0 p1 and then so on and so like before we start like going super fast speed of like just sharing our updates I, I want to make sure that like everyone that is on this call is comfortable with that process on like picking work and if everyone like especially the new ones know how to to select tasks like do you have any question about that specific part do you have colleagues like you that are joining this week is, is it completely clear um, yeah. Just no, I think it's yeah, I think it's clear. We basically, as we talked about that, uh, we go to the ready column and start picking yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And so sometimes I do a little bit of like the cat herding job of asking people directly um, based on their interests, based uh, on their previous experience, and based on the need of the project to say, hey, can you like focus on this specific set of tasks? Uh, for the newcomers, um, like I prefer not to do that right away because there is like so many things to like to grasp that is better for you to just like go through multiple issues on just IPFS, on just OEP repair and just IPLD so that you get like a, a more complete picture. Um, so this week, like, try to to like just open the three waffle boards and just like pick a bunch of like difficulty easy. And difficulty easy is is more of like a measure of time. It means like you should be able to do it in a short amount of time rather than like having to open ten thousand repos, um, so that you have a, a more complete picture. And then next week we can um, like discuss on the learnings. Probably give some of that information to Rob so that we can improve the documentation, and, and then like start like narrowing the scope of each one's focus if that that sounds cool cool okay all right i i know everyone understands i just want to make sure just like to get a hack from everyone that we are all in the same page uh cool let's go to the updates um uh, do we have a note taker for today john are you available too sweet thank you so much Cool, okay, so VMX Volker is not here today because he's busy at, uh, speaking at the conference, um, but he did share his update with us. Um, basically, he got JSIPFS API to be green again in CI. Thank you, Volker and Victor and Dimitri and everyone that contributed to that ever heard. It took some weeks, um, but now there is no reason not to run the tests in CI again. All right, and as he says, like he's pretty busy with um, the conference for the rest of the week. Um, but, but that's it. Like, if you are blocked in anything that Volker is working on, definitely send him an email or uh, a Slack message. Uh, he will respond. So, from me, uh, what I've done last week, I did a lot of merges, like a lot of review merges, uh, not releases. Like, JSIPFS remains um, at 0 0.28. Um, right now, we are in the state where JSIPFS has things merged that would require a minor version. And every time that we release a minor version, we typically do some fanfare about like, creating the release issue with the highlights and like rerun tests from all the other projects. And so the next release of JSIPFS will be 0 0.29. On the leap to peer front, uh, I did finish like revamping the CAD DHT module. Um, right now, the tests are all passing again, which they have been failing for a while. Um, and so that unblocked my work on on the delega delegated routing modules, which is what I'm going to be focused on this week. Uh, in addition to the refactoring how a lp 2 p node gets um, set up, there is a issue called lp 2 p next on on lp 2 p that describes that. What I've been blocked most, um, like so, as I said, like 
I've been reviewing and merging a lot of things myself. Uh, and I'm always like the last mile, like the, the last reviewer to every single PR. And it's kind of like unmaintainable right now <laughs> or like unsustainable right now. And so like, for example, Pedro is like taking responsibility on the unique CFS modules. Volker is getting more responsibility on the IPLD ones. And I would love to share if people are interested in the distribution, like the, the, the responsibility of other pieces of the stack so that we have more people that are super active and like super like able to review really quickly all the contributions. Um, you, don't, you don't have to volunteer right now. Uh, I am thinking of like opening an issue, just like to have that discussion and like to list also what are the expectations when someone becomes a captain. Um, and also to bring back a way to people to know who are the captains. Like in the past, we had like a captain um, thing on the readme, then we, we dropped it for some reason uh, and, and we should like consider bringing it back again. So, so yeah, that is my update. Any questions for me? Anything that you are blocked because of me? I know. Sounds good. Cool. That means that like I went through all the PRs. Uh, all right. Next one, Machi. So I have been doing some more work on the peer to peer dissector for Wireshark. Currently working on um, getting Yamux, uh, this uh, Muxer from GoIPFS working in Wireshark. And uh, I would appreciate some help because I have. Um, no idea what I'm doing, actually. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Tinesh, please. Sorry. Um, and uh, the next thing, or, or should I just let you finish because I was going to go to the next things? Um, so on, on that specific uh, item, uh, so Yamux, Speedy, Muxado, and Speedy Stream are all the same stream multiplexer. They are all variations of the Speedy 3.1 protocol. And so if you are looking to do a Wireshark dissector uh, for those protocols, you should look because there might be some speedy Wireshark dissector already uh, available. And then you just have to tune it up to the variations. Uh, remember like speedy is the stream multiplexer that then got repurposed to HTTP2. So I, I'm kind of like assuming or betting that there is something out there uh, that gets used because of HTTP2. Um, well, I found SpeedyI Shark, but it seems so old, I can't get it to compile, and uh, oh. there has a, a lot of stuff changed because it was uh, four years old or even older. And uh, there's also another problem because the Muxer in, uh, so far I haven't found the Muxer in Wireshark's uh, packets. And I have found actually one, but that isn't taking uh, actual connections. It's not uh, turning the max uh, data into a uh, conversation that I can use to dissect it. Uh, if I have explained it uh, in, an uh, in an understandable way. Uh, Got it. Um, uh, Victor just mentioned that you should talk with Kubuxo. Like apparently Kubuxo has some experience. Like has done some work that, of that in the past. And uh, so I'll go on. Uh, the next thing I will do is uh, somehow resolve those WebSocket star problems, but I have no idea how to debug um, all this heap stuff. And uh, yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing because I'm just new to this uh, thing that I can debug memory leaks this way. And yeah, would also need some help with that because it. it's also completely something new for me. And on the issue I created, um, Pedro or PGTE has, hasn't responded yet. Got it, got it. Uh, Vizier? So I think the, the last thing I read about this was that Viso and, and Lars possibly was working on, on making it a proper circuit uh, discovery server or something like that. And I'm, I'm wondering if the F if we should spend more effort on the JavaScript uh, WebSocket store, or if we should let Viso continue with the uh, P2P circuit thing he is implementing. Um, I think Viso canceled that endeavor, like he's not busy with other things. But even though I, if I don't, like even if that's not a correct answer, um, given 
that I think like what Machi is looking is to get some help to develop these skills and like debugging these kind of problems. It, it might be just like a good module to, to like get some new knowledge, get some new skills and like apply that knowledge directly with the potential to actually cause some impact um, in the short term. And so um, I'll think like if people have recommendations to Machi right now on like what are the good tutorials to do like perf analysis of a Socket.io server, definitely send to him. Like if you have recommendations, definitely send to him. I'm also going to look uh, on my notes and, and see if I can find good tutorials. I think I have some in mind so that you can have some guidance. Um, and I'll also ping Pedro again because he definitely has a ton of experience doing that. Mm. Sounds good? Uh, yes. So, um, so the, I'm sorry, it's the current plan that we are going to fix the leaks in VSR. Done. Uh, what? I haven't yeah. heard that correctly because um, connection problems. So the plan that David said right now is that we fix the memory leaks of VSR and we don't implement this new peer-to-peer -peer circuit thing. The, the plan should be just double check with Dizo on like what is his plan. Like, is he actively working or not? And then from there, make a decision if, like where most time is going to be spent. But meanwhile, definitely uh, explore the idea of like just fixing the memory leaks. Um, additionally, I wanted to mention, I have already written a peer-to-peer -peer circuit version of WebSocket Star, so that one is already out there. There is a PR open on the peer-to-peer -peer WebSocket Star repo. There is a PR open. That's right. Like you asked Victor a question about if it solved the problem. If you no, yeah. not that one, but uh, the other PR with uh, to get away from socket I/O and to use peer-to-peer uh, -peer circuit only. That thing I was talking about. There, there is a completely different transport. Like we cannot simply migrate it. Um, you can list that as a blocked issue that you need feedback here on the the crypt tab. I think that's the best way. Like it's something that you need like a more clear answer. I, uh, I acknowledge. And I, I, I think that pull request is blocked uh, on the limit peer refactor as well, which probably will take more. Um, well, it could be implemented with a hack, but um, I don't think people here like hacks. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I I am a bit concerned about the current state of WebSocket Star as it crashes when people, when we have enough peers connected to it. And right now the deployment is not stable at all and it keeps crashing. As soon as we have a lot of peers, it um, would be great to have this fixed, especially since WebSocket Star is now the default and not WebRTC Star anymore. Um, and how much RAM does it actually need in terms of gigabytes? Or how much would it need? Uh, how much? Uh, sorry, like I'm going to interrupt here because we are like getting into the weeds of like a specific problem, and this call is more designed to be an update, and we have nine minutes left. Uh, okay. If we if we need, we can like always have another call to discuss more in depth, so that so that we the three of us have clarity, and we are all on the same page. Sounds good. Uh, yes. Cool. Okay. Um, so, if you, do you have any other item to share, or should we go? In just two more things. Basically, I will continue finishing the P2P dissector when I get uh, time to do it and eventually do a demo. And it will work. Um, and I will also try to improve the P2P node trust so it can eventually get used in production. All right. Sweet. Thank you. Okay, John, do you want to go next? Sure. So um, we got some done um, from on the only only hash feature um david david uh merged a couple of those PRs. that was great um i also did uh a lot of work uh, you know a few hours rebasing and some other work on the npr prs um, and i made some changes to the to the interrupt pest so just changes you know tweaks all around um the what i'm working on this week is probably just you know addressing any issues that are brought up about the pin PR. I'm curious, it's such a large unit of work. There's like 1,500 change, change lines in this uh, PR. How the best way, and it's been built over such a long time, but the best way for us to, to review it successfully is. Um, it's basically feature ready. Um, 
for that. There's a couple of tests that are failing, but I don't think that, but I think they're all related. So um, the best way to move forward is to mm -hmm. make a very strong test suite that like covers all the things that we can imagine, just to make sure we we didn't miss any case. Like for example, Go IPFS is a very strong test suite for pinning, so we just like should map all those tests to just uh, IPFS land as well. Then yes, it's a very long PR, but it's like an entirely new feature. Like we we don't have pinning as a separate module. We have pinning as like a part that is a component inside the just IPFS repo. That's why it makes it feel so big. Um, and as you said, like it's a thing that has been going for a while, like almost a year now, or maybe a year and a half. So it kind of like blew up in size, and like pinning itself is like a complex thing. Mm -hmm. And so 500 lines for pinning is like not that scary, I think. Um, it is scary. Yeah. We don't have enough tests, so probably we should like have a thousand lines for tests, uh, if, or even more, uh, mm -hmm. just to make sure we we don't let things blow up. Sure. Okay. Good. Great. I will uh, go and cross-reference some of the Go, Go IPFS tests for that. Um, we do have like five or six hundred lines already, probably for test for between the interop and um, all the different you know HTTP CLI for JS IPFS. Um, but I'll. It's great to I'll look at Go IPFS. And um, another question is that, or so another thing that I uh, I am a little bit stuck on what really would be the next best thing for me to work on after this. Um, okay. For anything, okay. but. Um, I'll actually schedule it. Yeah. So I'm looking through those for something else, looking through the, our, our waffle board. Oh, all right. Yes. Yeah. Just like check the waffle board or if you, if you have a couple of things in mind that you want to discuss them more in depth, uh, always feel uh, welcome to schedule a call on Calendly as we did a couple of weeks ago, just mm -hmm. like to, to then expand more in one of those items. Great. Sweet. By the way, I haven't like reviewed the PR again because I haven't seen TI green. And so yep. let, let me know when that's ready for me to, like, to go through the 500 lines. Great. Sweet. All right, cool. Dimitri. Hey. Um, so I worked on uh, a few FSD CTL improvements. Um, I added the ability to use environment variables, as discussed with Victor, uh, to specify the exec. Um, yeah, there, there, there are two environment variables now, uh, JS and Go, as, as suggested. Um, we got this circuit stuff merged and the tutorial wrapped and everything there, so it's, it's a big step, I think. <laughs> um, next, I'll be working on a few more um, IPFSD CTL improvements, and I've been looking into um, service discovery uh, in loopy 2 p we have related mostly to the stuff that we've had um, previously discussed as well with circuit uh, relay discovery and things like that, but it kind of spans to um, pretty much the whole loop B2P stack and a better way of uh, announcing and scoring services. Um, the reason is because like the intro tests showed that sending a specific message for circuit relay, it's really, really slow. Uh, to discover that that uh, really so I think it's uh, I removed that ad hoc um, in there so um, what else oh yeah uh, more epiphys DCTL improvements <laughs> that's uh, it I'm not blocked on anything sounds good are do you feel like the, the the next items are the most important ones right now? Like the... I've looked, like, so that's, thanks. Uh, I've looked at the P0 issues and I see one of the things that is uh, available. There's a few bugs, there's a few smaller bugs in, in uh, Waffle Board, but the next big kind of chunk of work, it seems to be DHT. So, uh, I can definitely take care of the P0 ones that are, are um, the smaller issues that um, are just basically bugs, uh, which is what I see in the Waffle Board crown. 
Got it. Definitely open the trail off awards because there's just IPFS, just like peer-to-peer and just IPLD. Um, mm-hmm. Both just like peer-to-peer and just IPFS are well groomed. The just IPLD okay. one is still getting set up. Uh, there are multiple P1s and P0s. Some of them are mm-hmm. bugs. Some of them are just like features. Uh, like go through it quickly and like see if like and compare with these next items and see okay. if there is something that trumps these. Um, I, I believe there are some urgent things there that need to like some some attention. Okay, I'll look cool. at it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Victor, Victor. Hello. Um, so in JS land, I haven't done too much uh, since last time. The one thing I have done is to test JS IPFS API with the new Go IPFS release. Uh, there is one breaking change with the one list of BitSwap, which uh, we're going to have to release after the stable release has been done. Other than that, everything is working fine. The touch suite runs fine in browsers and everything. Um, currently, I am blocked on the JS IPFS deployment and the gateway because the node sometimes encounters this issue with uh, missing uh, node ID. And also in general, the daemon does not handle errors very well. Uh, it basically crashes in, in case there is an error. So it's basically impossible to run uh, JS IPFS as a gateway today as it crashes all the time. Um, David? Uh, can we get a, like a, a batch of stress tests that you think it mimics what the daemon gets subjected in the gateway so that we can like reproduce those failures faster and then make sure so, that we catch all the exceptions? The, the issue is not requesting items from the gateway. The issue is just running the daemon. So if you, if you run the daemon locally for five to 10 minutes, after a while it's gonna crash. And basically we just have to add like a little try catch uh, wherever we are actually starting the node and handle any error in, in basically. Uh, there is no specific ways it happens. Sometimes it can be running for one hour. Sometimes it's just, one minute but if you connect to the uh, websocket store so you get connected to other peers you will at one point or another have a crash demon sounds good like what i was asking because there is gateway requests there is api requests and there is even connections um and so these things that interact with the nodes is eventually will put it in a weird state that will throw an exception that apparently is not getting caught. I mean, the way that JavaScript works, if there is an exception that, that doesn't get caught, just crushes the whole process. Uh, in the browser, uh, for majority of the apps, that's typically okay because the browser just restarts the whole thing and, and it's fine. Um, for people like developing applications, like they do their own error handling, it seems like the daemon code is not catching like, the errors properly. And so if we have that stress test, it's useful, um, but like I also know that there's like a couple of ones that we already identified, even the line of code in Sakaio that's causing a problem. So let's fix those first. Um, for example, Dimitri, this would be like something super important uh, that needs to, to get handled. So I, I would disagree that it's important that we fix those specific issues. It's important that we have a proper error handler for any issue, not for those specific issues. Like we have to be acceptable that there can be errors and there will be errors anywhere. And we need to have a global handler that doesn't crash the process. The the thing is like with Node.js, the the lore, the wisdom is yes, you can have like a process uncaught exception and I like catch the whole thing. But uh, in comparison to other runtimes, like to other languages like Java and stuff like that, it is cheaper in Node.js land to reboot the process than to try to unwind some weird state. And so this is like common Node.js web application, what people do. Like uh, in Java land, it was always very important for you to like untangle things because like restarting the JVM was like super expensive. In Node, it was different. And so we need, I agree, we need to have a way to cut and cut exceptions, but we also need a way to identify exactly where they are coming from and like fix those problems because essentially there should not be a weird state where the node enters that then cannot get out. Um, and, and so like conventional, conventional wisdom of just having process on cut will not, not work necessarily for like IPFS. Um, but we can also like expand more on this um, 
on any issues just so that we don't steal everyone's time we're already two minutes over uh i'm sorry for taking like can we just like finish victor and then like do zane and then just close the meeting like closing three minutes is that okay for everyone okay i see some thumbs up sweet <laughs> thank you okay victor you have any other um the future i am working on jails ipfs refactoring tasks. good Ooh. One thing that just came to my mind is like there is a chicken and egg problem. When GoIPFS gets released, JSIPFS gets to get updated, which now has a breaking change. So it's kind of okay to release one first and then the other a second because this is a client. But because GoIPFS ships with the web UI, which uses JSIPFS API, um, now web UI needs to be shipped at the same time GoIPFS. And so there is like a triangle here that we need to like to be all synchronized in order for a successful Go IPFS release. Victor? Um, so maybe it will be a, a, a good moment to start with proper, proper migration process for JS IPFS where we make it compatible with the last version. And so then we can release a version that is both compatible with 13 and 14. And when we release 15, we remove the com uh, compass with 13. And that's why we can release the library and we don't have to really care. You mean the HTTP API, right? The HTTP API is, uh, the, interface. Yeah, the JS IPFS API, for example, changed yeah. from uh, returning null to returning array. So depending on the Go IPFS version, we would return differences. And that way we will be compatible with both. Okay. But, but I know that there's an issue. Let's continue the conversation on teacher. Uh, cool. Zane? Cool. So I um, just finished up the bootstrap peers validation PR. Um, thanks for all the comments. It was really super helpful. Um, then uh, while I was doing that, I noticed that the IP6 and IP4 um, validations on uh, JS like multi-format are actually incorrect. Uh, so I tried to fix this problem upstream. Um, but that doesn't seem like it's gonna be happening. And then I dug a little bit deeper and noticed that IPv6 was broken as well. Um, and fixing IPv6, IPv6 is a little bit more complicated and tricky because uh, there's so many different variations of valid formats. Um, so I'll be looking to sort of like fix that um, this upcoming week. And then uh, taking a stab at IPLD bug, um, which is basically uh, adding a custom hashing function for um, putting objects. Yeah. And nothing's blocking. That's it. Sweet. Thank you. Um, cool. I'll take a look into the IPv6, IPv4 thing as well. Uh, I think you know. I know what you mentioned. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. So we have one last question from Rob, and then I have my famous question uh, of every call. <laughs> Go ahead, Rob. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask. Um, I have that PR. Uh, I think one two six three about documenting the init boolean argument in the constructor options for IPFS. Um, and I, I had tried to keep it kind of concise because there's not a whole lot of room there for like a giant pile of documentation. But I think that questions other people asked point towards there needs to be room for some more description about how and when and why to use various options. Um, and so I'm wondering if uh, we should document that more, more normatively rather than have like an example usage block with some, some comments in the code, actually have some documentation of the IPFS constructor and the options it takes. Um, on that specific PR, I, I have jammed to it multiple times. And I always like uh, deadlock myself on thinking, should the behavior should be this one or should be what people like? Essentially, when you use Go IPFS, if there is a, an init repo and if you call init again, it will fail. Um, and it just tells like already the, the repo already exists. And we have mimicked that in just IPFS. So if you do a new node and then if you new, do a new node again on the same repo, it will fail. And so you, the second time you start a node, you have to change init to false. So that like, he doesn't try to in it, but like so many people, I like, get stuck in this, which I'm asking myself multiple times: Should we just like check if a repo is there, and if it is, just like let it pass with the init flag set to true, or should the default be init set to true if there is a repo and false 
if there is a repo, is, is that even like a same default? I'm not sure. Like it sounds even more confusing, but, um, and so I, yeah, very open to suggestions. We can add more docs. We can like add a full example, just like to explain these to people um, or just change the behavior and, and, and make what people expect, which seems like everyone just wants to do a new IPFS and get it done, <laughs> I guess. Dimitri? Yeah, I agree. Everyone wants to do new IPFS. I think it's the sanest thing. It's the cleanest way of doing it. Just print a warning saying, hey, to read initialize, skip an initialization or something. But just random that. And perhaps there is like a, an init option, which like if people want a clean repo every single time, they can say like force true or like uh, something. Uh, which again, changes a little bit of the flow compared to IPFS, but like one is mostly used on the terminal, the other is used mostly on the browser. So it m might be a valid argument to change how it behaves. Uh, did this like, answer help you, Rob, to think about these things? Uh, uh, well, so it sounds like there's actually some discussion that needs to be happen happening as to how it should function. So maybe uh, I or somebody should open an issue for that. Um, I was more wondering whether, uh, I should step back from what I was doing in that PR and reapproach it as how do we re how do we document the IPFS constructor in the events and all the like node specific things that don't belong in that core documentation um, in a more direct way rather than having like this usage thing with some comments in line right like have an actual step back and say we need to have a structured documentation of of this function. Got it, got it. Uh, we, okay, uh, on there, I think we can, like on the section below, so that, that's like kind of like the simple usage example, which a lot of developers will just copy paste, copy paste multiple times and like change a little bit. Uh, and then there is like the API below, which typically points to interface IPFS 4, but we can have some like the events, for example, um, be described there, um, which is kind of like what just leave to peer does. I, I think we, we can, can do that pass right now before we have this other discussion that tells us if we should change the behavior or not. Okay. So I should I should close that PR and open something totally different. That or or continue working on that PR. It's not. It keeps history. Uh, okay. We 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 can continue. Okay. Using that one. Cool. All right. I don't see any more hands up or any more questions. Uh, well, my famous question is a simple one. Given that we have uh, had this discussion, there is a waffle board, and also, as always, I'm available if you need to chat about anything, just use my Calendly. Does everyone feel comfortable on what they have to do this week? Is there anyone that is not sure? Everyone, yeah, okay, I see some hands, some thumbs up, some, some nodding hands. Okay, cool, all right. Thank you so much, and thank you for, uh, I'm sorry for like spending 10 extra minutes. Um, I hope that like next week we can contain ourselves to just the 30 regular minutes. That's it. Okay, cool. Uh, have a fun week. See you on the interwebs on IRC and all the channels. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Ciao, ciao.